through the Ion 7 and the Ion 7 Lite, both of us, quite yeah. a bit. Both, yeah. And we film in the UK. Yeah, the UK. And, and we, then we also, um, out in Bassano, Dolomites, gave it a good test out there. Let's talk about the Ion 7 Lite. Yes. What's it like on the ground? It's a really lovely glider. Um, I mean, I was, all the launches and everything that I, I've, I've done with it, and that's it's a range of conditions. So soaring slopes at home in the UK with a bit of wind. So building the wall and, and the ground handling and launching uh, as a reverse launch, all very nice and easy. So glider comes up well, responds well. Don't find that it, it doesn't shoot up. Um, so you're not having to sort of, oh, it's all fast and all happening too quickly. So it comes up nicely, ready, control, and off you go. Uh, how are the pilot demands? How would you describe For a low B, so the Ion 7 yeah. and the Ion 7 Lite, they're low B wings and with a kind of pretty average aspect ratio for low B wings, around 5.1, 5.2 off the top of my head. Mm. So they're quite sort of typical in that way. Some low Bs have a bit higher aspect ratio and some a little bit lower. And the Ion 7, you can see an over of the general feeling is they've aimed it to be sort of easy. That's their aim. Yeah. Let's, let's see what it's actually like. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so how did you find the... So I, let's start off with light conditions. In light conditions, forward launching, um, is, is easy, you can feel the glider. It comes up, I would say, slightly slower. What I mean is it doesn't come up super quick, so mm -hmm. you have to control it up, lifting yeah. into the air, making sure you are lifting and, and encouraging the glider into the air, but it not, it's not slow, it's not sluggish, but it's not a fast, you know, those gliders that come up and you think, oh, hang on a minute, whoa! <laughs> yeah, it comes up at a very steady pace, steady doesn't pace. it? Yes. And it hasn't got a... I didn't find it had any kind of pause or anything like that. It no, just it kind of yeah, no sticking. Bridge. It inflates nice and easy mm. and comes up progressively. Mm. I think it has relatively quite short lines compared to the other high and low Bs. Low and something Bs, like the yeah. Air Design Vivo 2 and Levy, they've got a bit longer lines. Yeah. But with the short lines actually, the glider has got so if the lines are longer, the glider's got longer to travel to go up and the glider can actually pick up more energy, I think. Okay. But yeah. with, with the short lines you've kind of got a more direct connection with the wing. So mm -hmm. if you imagine if the, the lines are really just imagine they were super really long and then you'd have a really long delay, you'd start launching the glider and then yeah. might have a cup of tea, stuff like that, <laughs> wait for the glider to come up. And if they're super short, you remember when you're ground handling like a mini wing mm. or something like that, then it's kind of whoosh, whoosh. Yeah, so with the Iron Seven and the Iron 7 Lite. Probably worth mentioning they're very similar gliders. So they're the, the same same wing, the same line layout and everything as far as I'm aware. I think the only difference is the, the materials. So I think we can pretty much say with the Iron 7 and the Iron 7 Lite having flown them mm. there, you can take it as the behavior of each is the same mm. with, the, with the normal differences you'd expect with the differences in, in the materials and weight. For example, in stronger winds, lighter gliders tend to blow up in the wind and be a little bit more of a handful to hold down. Um, but in lighter winds, lighter gliders tend to be easier to inflate and ground handle. Yeah. And yeah, we certainly found the Ion 7 and Ion 7 Lite nice and easy to inflate and launch. <laughs> yeah, both in the UK and when we went to Italy. We you did. had some You yeah. had some very nice launches out yes, there that seemed to go very well. Yeah, I think actually that, that's one thing I can always say as a, as a starting point really is that actually it's, it's a glider that's quite well suited to mountain, alpine -y sort yeah. of conditions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it felt very good when we were out in Bassano and, and Dolomites, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point because we had the opportunity to test them quite a bit in the UK mm. first and then going out to well, we thought we'd dive in at the deep, at deep yes. end and then go straight to the Dolomites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which took a little bit of, whoa, getting yeah, used to. that was eye-opening. And then, yeah, <laughs> flying in those conditions, absolutely, I think yeah, I really agree. And then going to even Bassano, flying in stronger conditions, it feels like, ah, yeah, that feels it's like... It's really made for that. I mean, the so the launching in the Dolomites, um, yeah, you, you've got a bit of altitude, um, they're sort of changing winds and taking off between the cable cars yeah so the gap not between them and the conditions were they were still relatively easy yeah and we waited for a, you know the right sort of good moment and but the glider it, it straight up you know we didn't have to worry about the the conditions and everything the glider responded well and and launched up nicely in those sorts of conditions so yeah, yeah. and then just for ground handling playing around on the ground and that was more in the uk when, when you're flying out in the mountains and sites like here out in Colombia, you tend to be up, off. Yes. You don't tend to stand around ground handling. No. So in the UK, we do kite and ground handle the wings quite a lot more. Mm. And it's a very, very easy 
like yeah. to, kind of, to ground handle and it invites you to just step to the side, chop a wingtip and you can do the kind of one wingtip over there, one wingtip <laughs> over there, one wingtip over there and that sort of thing and it's really easy and playful. Mm. So. We have to admit when we first flew the Ion 7 and the Ion 7 Lite, Nancy, um, I, I flew the, the small, I think you flew the extra small. Yes. And um, when we first flew them, we have to admit they were a little bit like, mm -hmm. it's they don't really turn very much, very well, do they? That's right, yeah, you, you feel like, well, oh, come on, I could do with a little bit more. Um, yeah, well, I felt like, you know, a good amount more yeah. when I first <laughs> flew them. And then I think it's because before that I'd been flying the 10 or 2, and so you kind of got used to a certain amount of brake travel. So, um, and the Iron 7, quite the first part of the brake travel doesn't do a lot. Agreed. It's actually quite a long it's bit where noticeable. it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. do much at all. Yes. And then in turn, so if you do that, it will turn, but it turns kind of, kind of slowly. And you, you do get a feeling of, I want some more yeah. to turn tighter. You kind of feel like, come on, I want some more. But then eventually, that was the first day we flew out. And we both came up with a conclusion. It's like, just don't turn very well. Yeah, because with that scenario we were, were in with the soaring the hill. So you're, you put in a turn and it's that as you say the first part of the brake travel feels like you're really nothing's happening and but if you add the weight shift more weight shift more brake and get it past that sort of first part yeah. of the travel there's a biting point there's a biting point yeah. and then okay now we're rocking and rolling not you, now you're getting in so now you're getting a glider that is actually yeah. communicating a bit more and getting more into the air and of course yeah. That's why it shone out in the Dolomites because we were suddenly, you were in those stronger thermals. So you were, right, I'm going to get the weight shift over, get the brake gonna in, wang it and dial, it. dial in, and, and then it's just woo, off, off you go. Yeah, and there's a point then when you use just more weight shift and get the glider rolling, rolling around, and it does like to roll. So to roll around and then get the brake just past that point, then it kind of doesn't exactly, I don't want to say bites in, but it kind of, now it turns. It yes. Kind of, yeah. Because oh, all right, okay, you want me to turn? Yeah. And then oh, it comes round. Yeah. So and that was like our second day's test flying back in the UK again. Yeah. And we flew it in more thermic conditions, and then it was like, wow, actually, do you know what? We're really having fun on the glider. It's, yes. It's really then it's sort of a playful nature comes out of it. Well, designers got to try and make a glider that gives you enough feedback so you can actually feel what's going on in the air. There's been some gliders over the years where they've just tried to make it really solid and, and reassuring, but you can't feel anything. What's yeah. going on? Yeah and what they call a mattress or a plank <laughs> above your head. Mm -hmm. So with the Ion 7, I, I feel like that's he said, I feel that like they've got a really nice balance. It feels very solid and confidence inspiring um, and reassuring, but at the same time, you get a nice level of feedback from the glider. It is a little on the, I'd say a little bit on the muted dampened side yeah. compared to some other low and low to mid B gliders. Mm -hmm. So I think they've gone for a little bit more on the reassuring side. That's a nice balance. You can, mm -hmm. you know, you're a newish pilot or you're, you're looking for that bit more of a reassuring glider. Um, but occasionally you, you, you get in the groove <laughs> and you want a little bit more. Then, you know, yeah, actually, well, I can get the breakdown. I can get my weight shift in and I can make this glider roll into mm -hmm. the flow of the thermals and turns and everything. And if you know you're going to be flying somewhere where there's strong thermic conditions, then I think it's well, particularly well suited yeah. to that. Yes. It can also do well, do do well in the UK, the weaker kind of UK or I keep saying UK small hills. Basically, it's not yeah. about the UK. It's just about the conditions of the day and that. And on average, mm. so you've got those kind of more subtle conditions. And I think you can still do yeah. well in it. But we did definitely notice when we were flying with others, there are other gliders that are competitors that are kind of doing a bit better, and those yeah. that are a bit more floaty and a bit more efficient in there and make it flatter turns because yeah. just like you're saying the Ion 7 it's it's a little bit rolly less rolly than its predecessors the Ion 6 and 5 mm. uh, check our reviews of those particularly I remember the, the Ion 5 which actually I tested out here in Colombia yeah yeah and that was very rolly and had a bit of a tendency as well when you if you stuffed the brake to turn it would wind down into a spiral a bit and you needed mm. to be a bit careful of that and the Ion 7 still has that slightly rolly, more rolly kind of turn, um, but not as much as that, mm. which I think is good. And I didn't find, if you do stuff the brake and hold it, I think there is a little bit more of a tendency to go round and go, go into a tighter sort of height losing turn 
than some other gliders that have a tendency to turn flat. Mm. But I think it was it was a nice balance. You do want to, when you're trying to turn tight, you do want to, you can, I didn't find you can just stuff the brake and just hold it there and let it go around because then the, glider, the outer tip will start to drop. Yeah. You just want, but you only have to use a little bit of outer brake to make it turn flat. Yes. So I think if you're flying is a lot in the UK and or somewhere that's got generally weaker conditions, um, the RM7 will still do well because it's still got a good, good, yeah. good performance and a good climb rate. But I don't think it's going to shine mm. in that area. Where it shines best is in in the stronger conditions. That where it really stands out. Yeah. That, that's from our testing. Yeah. We found that. Flying with others who who were definitely on higher performance wings, the uh, high Bs, the Cs, uh, uh, etc. And it's got a good guide. It's I mean mm. it's it's got a you know the sink rate. I'd, I'd kind of just put it sort of in the middle. It's it's generally feeling quite good. I, I felt like I was able to keep up. Um, mm -hmm. I felt like I had the extra speed with the speed bar um, enough to. to to keep up with, yeah. the, with the crew. Yeah, I think it's got. I think it's got a very good glide for the class. When you're flying straight and level, it's mm. got a very good glide. I think the way the glider is made, it's, um, and also it's very pitch stable. As long as you keep yourself nice and steady and don't start to let yourself to, to induce PIO, pilot induced oscillation, but just keep it nice and steady. And the glider glided really well. Yeah. Now we did. We were directly comparing ourselves. I was flying the V. Channel 2 light, Nancy's mm. flying the Ion 7 light. Yes. And Nancy's glider was a, a size smaller, yes. so that's something to bear in mind. So usually you'd expect a little less performance. Mm. And I think we both, well, I felt that during that trip, what we noticed is that the Ion 7 with that kind of wanging handling mm. and rolly handling, when we had a really strong, punchy core, it was doing really, really well in that and climbing really nicely um, and, and really good like that. And, and when we were flying in really turbulent punchy conditions in the Dolomites yes um, it felt really really reassuring and solid yes. and I, th I kind of yeah. so I kind of feel like you know, I had a slight edge there over yes. the tunnel too yeah I would say that it's got like it's got a slight edge in there just because it's just very easy in the in the low, in the low B class yes yeah. and when we're on straight glide mm. they seem quite very comparable yeah very similar yeah, yeah. quite and similar I, yeah that. I didn't yeah. didn't feel like I was losing out I felt like I could keep up yeah. and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. The speed system, so I think with the, the Ion 7 the, the pressure is moderate, um, neither very light or, or heavy, so it's moderate, so nothing much to report particularly there. Um, I, I agree with that, yeah, I, I certainly, yeah, it's not one of those bars you put on, you think, oh my god, i got a workout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't yeah. super light, so yeah, just a, a moderate pressure. Yeah, yeah moderate. Um, and. It's got a relatively long travel. For a, for a low B, it's got a surprisingly long speed bar travel. So you actually do need to make sure you've got your harness set up correctly. Otherwise, you'll find you won't you won't be able to do the full speed bar travel. The the glider picks up a lot, of, quite a lot of speed for the class. It is surprisingly quick at the top speed. I did notice on the Iron Seven that that last bit of speed bar, the glider definitely starts to get a bit more edgy. It starts to dimple more and starts to flutter a little bit on the leading edge. So just that last extra bit that they've squeezed out of mm. it. The glider is still it's still usable and, and still fine. But for a low B glider, I also tested some collapses on it. Um, for a low B glider, when you do full speed collapses, they're quite dynamic for a low B, uh, low B wing. And of course, in the certification, they don't have low B, mid B, high B. They just have B. So in other words, um, you could pass a glider through low, you know, as you could get as long as it gets through in the B category, it's going to get a B. So, and I did find that at fully accelerated, the the collapses were quite dynamic for the class. Normal speed, they were totally fine, but that extra edge that they're giving you, that extra bit of speed, I think should be used for the pilots using it. Should be used with a bit of caution. I also noticed that the glide deteriorates a reasonable mm. amount on that extra bit of bar. So you're actually you get to that the normal sort of part of the bar and you push on that bit more and the glide just drops off a bit more as well. So mm. I think for an efficiency point of view, um, you'd probably be using the, a third half, two thirds speed bar more. So you've got a normal kind of speed range. Yeah. But it, it, can't, it can't be denied. It's definitely very nice that you've got that extra bit of speed. And I'm wondering if other manufacturers will follow suit now that Nova have done that with the Ion 7, if others will follow suit and do the same. Mm. And we, of course, used the speed bar when we were doing big ears as well. Oh, yes. And yeah. So, and that, that, that provides a nice 
combination. I mean, it mm -hmm. usually does, but uh, yeah, getting a good descent rate. With, Very effective. And yeah. actually, because of that extra speed, the speed bar, getting the big ears in, mm. and you can pull them in, reaching up nice and high, pulling yeah. yeah, pretty big. Did, how did you find them when they were in? So they, if I remember, they just stay in. Yes. Yeah, they just stay in, that's right. Yeah, so yeah. when you do big ears, the pressure to pull them in is moderate. I would say moderate as well. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. wasn't that physical, but yeah, quite noticeably that actually once they're in, they're in, they're in, and yes. actually to get them out was I think de you, demonstrated yeah, a bit on video a little bit, but it's yeah, it you have to they stay in. So yeah, so that's on the one hand you can always argue two ways about this. On the one yeah. hand, it makes them easy to hold in, and if you're wanting to get down, that it's easy. Mm. But then to get them out, you do need to yeah, you really do need it to was, pump pump them out. So, yeah. So, Surprisingly for the class, most gliders in that class, the ears come in and when you let go, they start to peel and pop out. Yeah. Sort of quite quickly. But this, yeah, this really required the sort of rolling maybe to the side or mm. the little, uh, you know, a bit of a brake pump um, to, yeah. to actually pop them out. So yeah, I, I was surprised by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. that's very true. The other thing I noticed with big ears, we've mentioned already the Ion 7's a little bit rolly. So when you put big ears in and, and go on the speed bar, you kind of need to make sure that you're sitting and don't start to, to sort of wobble and if the air's turbulent, because you, it's, um, with big ears, I don't know if you may have noticed, but you're, when you pull the big ears, you're re removing the stabilos, the, the wing tips. And there's a reason they're called stabilos, stabilizers. It's because they're like rudders and they stop gliders um, rolling so much. They keep the glider more steady. And so the glider has a bit of a tendency to roll, and I did notice that with the Iron 7 when you pull big ears. Sometimes if the air's a bit bumpy, you can start to get a bit of a, a rock and roll a little bit. Uh, with the right input, you can stop that. Quite often, less experienced pilots tend to get the timing slightly wrong and start to find that they're actually building up. So, but yeah, so that's a little bit I noticed with the Iron 7. Only a minor thing. Yeah. So the risers that are on the Nova Ion 7 are actually, they're very nice, the, the standard risers. So we, we were flying the gliders with the, the standard risers as, this, as the glider is supplied. And they're a lovely balance. So they're not thick risers and they're not skinny, shoelacy type risers. They're just actually spot on. The, the standard risers don't have a, um, the ex, they don't have a BC bridge system. So there isn't a bridge between the B and the C risers. Mm. So you have the optional XC risers um, which add on the BC bridge and they do away with the B riser so they've gone for the system that they do away with the B riser completely and have a line between uh, the, the C's and the A's with pulleys that they go through to give you a, a very effective BC bridge system so that's where you're flying on the back risers and um, you've got that when you pull down the rear risers, the BC bridge engages, so it pulls down the Bs as well. I'd like to mention that, that I mean, with the, the, the standard risers, even though they don't have a BC bridge, mm. you can still fly with the glider on yeah. the rear risers. Hold the rear risers, And yes. actually, mm. it works just, it works very well. I think it works fine. Mm. It's not quite as efficient because you, when you pull down, if you pull down lots on the rear risers, then you'll start to put a crease across the glider. And that's mm. the point of the BC bridge. It's to give you, it's to make it so that when you're pulling down on the rear risers, which you should do straight down to get the proper effect of it, if you pull back on the risers, you'll still put a crease in the wing. So yeah, so it's got that that system, and that and that's a very nice system. So, and actually, this I think this brings me on to a little bit with the Arm Seven. Um, you were mentioning about the different kind of harnesses. Yeah. Front. I think it's a glider that you can get um, as a talented beginner. And somebody with good feeling, you can. It's a glider you can get straight out of school yes. and go and fly that. And the fact that it's got the pretty forgiving ground handling characteristics mm. and general flying characteristics, that's really nice. Um, but then it's got very good glide and performance and mm. that extra bit of speed. So it's something yeah. that you can also then progress on to mm. and uh, get into cross country flying. Yeah. And so then you've got the option. So you, I, I'd recommend. If you're, it's your first glider or something like that, and you're not so much into cross-country flying, go for the standard risers because yeah. they are—they just make the handling on the ground simpler. These, the BC systems are kind of when you're you're like squeezing out a little bit more performance for your glider. It's not—it's not like the difference between going XC and not—not not at all. It's just giving you that little extra edge in performance when you're you're already pretty much maxing the performance out of the glider. Now you just want to squeeze, get that last bit of the two space tube out. And squeeze it out of there. <laughs> and, I, and I would say, you know, if you're a pilot who's 
just looking to get a bit more reassurance because you're flying perhaps the mountain alpine sort of conditions and yep. you feel like yeah actually I, I i want that safety but i want to have that glider that gives me that little bit more than mm -hmm. that and, and not having to fly a mid or a high b spiral dives on the ion 7 well they're they're very easy to bring go into but not over easy we've talked about that rolly tendency of the glider so it's Nice and easy to go into the spiral, but I'm pleased to see compared to the Iron 5 and 6, a bit of a less of a tendency for the glider to sort of wind in and, and go into the spiral a bit too quick. So it was very easy to control going into the spiral and easy to control while you're in, in the spiral and then easy to come back out again. And because of that very high pitch stability, it's it's very forgiving. You can kind of, I tried going into a quite a tight 360 into a, not a fully locked out spiral, but eased my hands up and let the glider climb climbed out and then it sort of nodded but just stopped and flew away so very forgiving in that way and I actually I did uh, quite a few wing overs actually mm -hmm. with the glider as well sort of little ones and then sort of building it up a little bit um yes, wibble landers <laughs> yes <laughs> wobble landers and then wing overs wing overs yeah yes. and uh, yeah so I was playing around with that actually I saw Lo you. Yeah, lots of height. you were having fun I was I was having lots of fun so the glider the, the ion 7 uh, ion 7 light it's a fun glider and I yeah. enjoyed doing the wing overs. It was a nice, um, because he's got that nice feeling, it's, it's a good one to be learning uh, the, the wing overs on as well. So um, yeah, building them up, starting off small and building mm -hmm. it up. Uh, so yeah, that energy does, does come through. So a lot of fun. Yeah, so it's good. And actually for, for playing around and just getting into, Nova say about the Iron 7 that it's even a glider that's capable of doing some, some of the kind of beginner entry level acro maneuvers like sats and other things like that so it's quite a good wing it's very versatile from that point of view as well so as well as being a very forgiving and nice easy glider to fly which i did think is part of the reason it's a good glider to to get into if you're the kind of pilot's interested in getting into doing some acro then it's a it's a glider that's actually very good for that as well yeah. unfortunately i didn't get a chance to try it but apparently the ion 7 does very good helicopters nova say so i definitely want to try that out at some point mm -hmm. have you done helicopters on that ion 7 not you theo not you, you they, they, we're not worried about it. you can do the helicopter on anything <laughs> helicopters on the ion 7 stick your let post, us know let yeah, us know let us know and post your video link down below <laughs> so i just thought um i did actually get a chance to do on the iron 7 a number of collapses full frontals and asymmetric collapses and the, it, the behavior was very very good indeed very benign very easy so um i just wanted to add that point from actual not just en tests which is one thing but actually just real live tests